Welcome to Lido, Berlin, where I have Oliver from Camelot with me. First things first, how is uh, Camelot Circa 2018 doing? Um, yeah, we have now the the DVD recording right. Uh, we had it right at the beginning of the tour. So actually, the well, the best and the worst is uh, already done, and we can um, go more relaxed into into the whole touring season basically because the DVD was a big uh, achievement something which we were working for since many months so we're kind of relieved okay it was in uh, Tilburg right yeah. so uh, how did it go um, it was fantastic you know we had a sold-out show over 3,000 people um, it it's one of our favorite uh, venues in Europe anyway um, and yeah, I I'm really happy that also the technology worked well. You know, I was I had a bit I was a bit, bit anxious about these sites um, because I had a couple of those things under my control. You know, but everything worked like a fucking uh, clock wheel. You know, everything was perfect, and um, our team was yeah it was awesome. So when the show was a blast. Okay, and people weren't recording with their cell phones. <laughs> no, we we told them specifically not to, and yeah, amazingly, I I think they they really followed those those rules. The only time during the ballot, here's to the fall, we we wanted to see the the cell phones up as a replacement for candles. Oh yeah, yeah. And uh, is there anything you can tell me about the release? Uh, is there going to be some bonus material? Uh, what kind of a uh, release will the live DVD be? Um, honestly, I don't know much about it. Um, I I was so busy with, uh, yeah, you know, organizing parts of the DVD, so I, I really don't have a clue. And it's more about the label. I'm sure there's going to be some uh, behind the scenes stuff, and we're also working on it right now, interviews and uh, stuff. But I can't tell you exactly what it's going to be. Okay, uh, Tilburg was a couple of days ago, but you started the tour from Köln yeah. like one week ago. So how has the tour started? All in all. Um, yeah, so far, of course, we don't have a big show like uh, Tilburg. So Köln was pretty small. Um, Berlin is is now like uh, medium size, and I don't think there's going to be another show as big as Tilburg on on this on this round. But yeah, it's, uh, we feel fine. The weather is good. Food is great. People are nice. So that's my job, and I, I love it. Uh, as I understand, you will be touring till the end of this year. So, what are your expectations for the rest of the year? Uh, ending in Australia, if I'm right. Yeah, yeah, Japan. That's Japan. I think it's uh, one of my top three favorite countries to tour. It's every time, amazing to go there. The culture, the the way everything is organized. You know, for for touring musician, this is just a it's a big dream. And then finally, going back to Australia again is also amazing. Um, and uh, this time, actually, for the first time, I booked some days before and ahead, so that it's not like a, you know flying out right after the last show and not seeing anything of the country. So I have a little bit of time to check out the the culture and the people, and yeah, look. And uh, how was the festival summer for you guys? Um, I think we even had one of the best shows ever. It was in Bulgaria. What was the name of the festival? I'm really bad with names and, and stuff. It was amazing. It was the greatest festival I played. And I played like five times Wacken. <laughs> the The response was uh, was great. Yeah, we had some smaller festivals. We had, again, we had a good time out there. Nothing bad happened. So we played a few. All went well. Okay, uh, nothing bad. But uh, what about the highlights? What was uh, so good in, uh, in uh, Bulgaria, for example? It's always about the mood in that actual moment. It's about the response from the crowd. We, we live off the energy, you know. It's always like they give us energy, we give it back. And if, if that flow is interrupted or not really working well, nobody feels super comfortable. And um, in that case, the people, they were, we were kind of, uh, it was like a wave of, of positive energy from the Bulgarian crowd. And uh, I will always remember that. It was amazing. Okay, uh, you released Shadow Theory earlier this year. So now, more or less after you know uh, six months after the release, what are your feelings about the album? Um, you know, it was a pretty tough 
album in the making. We had some, well, let's say difficulties, um, and I'm, I'm quite uh, surprised that it, that it's going so well. I mean, it's a great album. There are good songs on it, I think, and but we, especially in the U.S. now, we are we kind of doubled our crowd at certain places. We we can go back to ve uh, venues where we haven't played since uh, ten years or so. So the album has uh, got a really good reception and sales. So uh, I'm I'm really happy there. But you know, it, it usually needs two years until you really know the numbers and uh, everything. But so far we're happy. And how has uh, how have the new songs worked live? Um, good. We we play also a lot. Uh, if you stay during the concert later, you will you will hear I think even four four songs from the new album, which is quite a lot. There are not many old songs left by now. It's all like from the Tommy era on Silverthorn Haven and uh, the Shadow Theory, and that that's a good thing, you know. That um, I, I I played in bands before where the fans always wanted to have old songs, you know, the classics. And in our case, it's it's really cool, you know. A lot of the fans don't even know the older songs anymore, um, which is I like it, you know. Uh, drummer Johan Nunes joined the band for this album. Uh, how did he influence the band? Um, he's not with us anymore, oh. uh, uh, at least not now. You know, it's Alex Landenburg from Germany. Yes. Um, uh, Johan had to uh, quit the tour due to um, um, certain problems. You know, it was published back then. It was really bad because we uh, we practiced with him for for a long time. He prepared, of course, for uh, uh, months. And then after the second show, uh, Alex Landenburg had to fly in, like do an emergency job. And since then, he's um, he's with us. Yeah. Uh, as it is with many metal bands, uh, there's have been uh, some uh, lineup changes with mm. Camelot too. Uh, for you, what is the essence of Camelot that always prevails, even though you know the players might change? It's that special sound. I think Camelot is, is quite unique. Um, that mixture of progressive and symphonic elements. There's even a little bit of jazz, especially since I was coming in. And um, I think that is probably the essence. And if you find the right people who can grasp that essence, then the Camelot sound will be kept. And yeah, um, if you look back on the on the last DVD, uh, 12 years ago, one one called Winter's Night, it's only Thomas and me, which are left of of the old lineup. But still, the Camelot sound um, is is still there, and it's um, it's evolving. Yeah, I think Thomas is the the one player that is that has uh, been there from the start to today. So, um, how do you see the future of Camelot? I mean, every every new album is a challenge, and uh, you have to try to make it better and different. Um, we have such an a great songwriter team, though, that I'm not afraid that we repeat ourselves or that things will go down. So, I hope we keep on surprising our fans and. Uh, that they will like our little experiments we do every time because i i cannot live by doing the same stuff over and over i have to evolve myself and that is true then for for the whole songwriter team of camelot uh, for you what were the new elements for this album um since i'm more on the, on the songwriter side and the um especially also orchestration keyboards there on the ladder i can do a lot you know i this time on the album i did more hybrid things that means you t uh, bring in um traditional symphonic elements you know like uh, viola uh, brass instruments but then also a lot of synthesized sounds and that certain mixture that gives you so many um possibilities to uh, experiment on the sound and that is also what makes the Camelot um, albums of, often very different, you know. Even if sometimes you don't hear that consciously, but there's a lot going on in the background. So that is, that is at least from my side what uh, what's different. Okay, thank you so much and a break a leg tonight. Thank you. Nice.